it's Canon XL1 time again. Uh, in the last video we uh, managed to repair the power supply fault. It was a bit of a bodge repair but I think, it, uh, I think it's, it's held up uh, okay so far so I think it'll probably last for the foreseeable future and uh, because I know what the problem is I can always uh, try and do another fix if it, if it fails again. Uh, today we're going to have another look at the uh, cassette mechanism. In one of the previous videos, uh, I talked about how to uh, align the um, tape guides to line up with the head pro to line up the uh, tape with the head properly. Um, I did that by by eye, just by looking at the picture in the viewfinder, uh, and that 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 can work. But um, ideally, you'd use an oscilloscope. Uh, now I have since actually managed to mess this up. I've managed to mess up the alignments on here, so I'm going to try and do it properly use, using the oscilloscope. Uh, now, in in uh, in the camera on the uh, printed circuit board, there's uh, a test point, which is designed specifically for you to cook to hook uh, an oscilloscope up to look at the um, output from the um, head amplifier, uh, and from that you should be able to uh, see what the waveform looks like, and you can use that to align the tape properly. Right, we're just using the playback, so we don't need the uh, camera module in, so I'm going to remove that, then I, won't, then I can easily access the board. Right, the head amplifier is uh, this in this can, and the... Um, bits that we need to probe is that test point there. That doesn't look too good to me. Yeah, basically you'd expect this to be flat like a big rectangle. I'm not quite sure whether what's going on with the trigger. I'm not sure if it's a triggering issue or if it's a mechanical issue with the um, machine. I actually don't know what sort of scope bandwidth you're trying for this. I mean, this is just a 20 megahertz scope. Right, I've just been fiddling with this thing for absolutely ages. Uh, with quite a bit of trial and error, and I think I actually got it going. Now you can see on the oscilloscope, uh, we've got a nice flat waveform. Not quite triggered, but yeah. If we trigger it, that's probably fairly correct. And if we look at the picture on this known good tape, uh, the picture actually looks reasonable and we've got a time code as well. Uh, one thing I'm not sure about is whether it should be jittering around like that. That's the, the guide we've been playing with. It is a, this mechani whole mechanism is quite loose. Now this, this one, when it's, in, when it's in its position down here, is uh, quite... You can't see on the camera, when it's down here, it's uh, quite stiff. This one's actually quite loose when it's it's positioned down here. They seem relatively tight. I think they're tight, tight enough not going to spin round. So I think I'll just uh, leave it to that for now and see how I get on. I'll just give that a little prod. You can see the RF goes down quite a bit. and we lose the picture. Yeah, I've let go and it's not come back, so we might have to... Yeah, we seem to have lost it. Let's just take the tape out and put it back in again. Not quite nearly. Yeah, I think that's looking as good as we'll get it. Right, I'm just trying a, a different tape. This is probably a much better uh, recording on the tape. However, it's in a different format, so we, we don't actually get a, a usable picture. But if we look on the oscilloscope, now we've actually got a very nice waveform on there. And if I just give that guide a little prod, let's see what will happen. 
Yeah, see, so I've given it a little prod now and it's completely screwed up. Right, I'll eject the tape and put it back in and see if that'll restore it. Uh, yeah, you can see that's come good again now, I've put the tape back in. Right, if you're watching this, it means that the Canon XL1 tape drive is working now. Uh, I've managed to get it working, as you saw in the last uh, few clips. It seems a bit if I've, I've tested it, uh, but it, it seems to work okay, but it seemed a bit iffy when I was adjusting it, that exit guide. Uh, if you give it a prod, it, it'll move and then it won't go back into the right adjustments unless you eject the tape and have the guide move back and then put the tape back in and have the guide move back and basically reset the whole thing. But it, it was fine if you did that. So I have tested it a few times now and it seems to work. If you're watching this, it must work because I'm recording to tape. Uh, I think I'll uh, take the camera out uh, at some point. Now we've got a bit of uh, nicer weather, I think I'll take the camera out and uh, see if I can get some nice footage with it. You see, at the moment we've got a good picture. If I if I just um, stick the screwdriver in there, oh crap! I touched there. Oh oh! Because it's, it's earth on the so let's go. Getting bloody electric shocks off the camcorder. <laughs> I'm putting electric shocks off the camcorder, it's because it's earthed through the oscilloscope and I'm touching this uh, this Sony camera that's um, connected to the mains power supply. <laughs> I'll, I'll use an insulated tool instead. 